There are four settings that are all adjustable on almost any camera that if you learn, you can master your cinematography and take your video skills to the next level and stand out on YouTube. And today we're talking about frame rate. Hi, Ridge here. It's my goal on this channel to help you improve your video quality so you can stand out on YouTube and become successful. So let's all take that first step by hitting the subscribe button and the bell notification so you're not missing any tips or steps that we're all taking. And make sure you stay to the end of the video because I'm going to give you one particular tip that you need to implement regardless of what frame rate you're shooting in. Frame rate is defined by FPS, frames per second. That's how many pictures are taken per second. For the longest time, 24 frames a second was the most common. It was settled around the early 1900s when they decided that you could get, that was the least amount of frames they could get away with without the footage looking glitchy and weird. So the 24 frames a second was decided purely out of a budgetary reason honestly because film was incredibly expensive so 24 pictures would be taken per second and that gave the most fluid motion without looking too choppy or too glitchy nowadays we're shooting on all kinds of frame rates i mean if you're bold you'll be like peter jackson and shoot in 48 frames a second and if you want to make people nauseous and sick you can shoot gemini man in 128 frames a second and make people feel like they're watching a video game the whole time i'm just saying that's my opinion ryan it's just my opinion no I was, so don't i know no, you were going to say something so just shut up rude that's why i would recommend shooting in 24 frames a second because we associate that with hollywood because they always shoot in 24 frames a second for the most part so if you're wanting to make people feel comfortable like your videos are very cinematic i'd recommend shooting in 24 frames a second now let's break down what exactly happens when you shoot or more or less frames per second so you're shooting in 24 frames a second that means 24 pictures are taken so during a time that there's movement you're going to get what's called motion blur and that means that while that frame was open you're getting some blur in the image however shutter speed can help that we'll talk about that in a later video but the more frames that you have that means the slower you can play the footage back most of your cell phone shooters out there have it's like 160 or 260 frames a second now i think and it looks really good that means it's shooting more frames per second which means that when played back slower you have more frames creating a clearer image to play back at a slower speed if you've been on youtube at all you know what slow-mo is or the slow-mo guys and they shoot incredibly high frame rates so that way they can play their footage back at a very slow speed and there's no motion blur this is what it looks like when you shoot in regular 24 frames a second and slow it down I'm gonna interrupt Ridge just for a brief moment. I'm shooting this in 128 frames a second because why not? But the biggest thing is that I want you to know is if you're shooting on your phone, you don't have access to a lot of these settings and you can't change them from 24 to 30 or 60. So if you download a custom app, which allows you to control your phone and there are for Android, there is for iOS, you just have to search for custom camera controls and download that app and use it through there to give you the best cinematography that you possibly can get out of your camera. So you can see there's advantages in shooting in different frames frame rates. So what should you be shooting in if you are on YouTube right now? Well, the biggest question is what type of content are you shooting? Are you shooting content like this that that is educational? Then 24 or 30 frames a second is perfectly reasonable. You'll never catch me ever, ever, ever shooting in 30 frames a second because I grew up during the time that we had to shoot in 30i, which is 30 frames a second essentially. And that 
meant I was poor and I couldn't buy the expensive cameras that shot in 24 frames a second. So I will never shoot in 30 frames a second. However, most vloggers or news cast, news stations, they all projected 30 frames a second. So it's perfectly reasonable. I mean, we live in a time that with, with, with all the social media and all the phones and stuff like that, God knows what frame rate they're actually shooting in. So in the end, it really doesn't matter. Although, like I would mention, if you're shooting something that's action-based, definitely shoot in a higher frame rate. That way you have the opportunity to slow something down if you want it and it's going to look good and not glitchy like if you shoot it in 24 frames a second and have to end up slowing it down. So for your average everyday shooter, shooting anywhere from 24 frames a second to 30 frames a second, and that's typically the only choices you get, is perfectly reasonable and perfectly fine. There are a lot of really professional YouTubers that shoot at 30 frames a second. So it's by no means crappy or dumb to do it. I just prefer the look of 24 frames a second. And my last tip is going to be, regardless of what shutter speed you're shooting in, make sure that your shutter speed is double what your frame rate is. So if you're shooting in 24 frames a second, make sure that your shutter speed is at least 50 or 60. 60 frames a second's gotta be 120. If you're shooting at 120, then it's obviously gotta be, Ryan, what's the math? But shutter speed is a topic for another day. I'm gonna link that video right here, and I'm gonna link another video right here that's going to help you improve your video skills and quality. And hopefully through these tips and simplified filming, you can stand out and become successful.